Good morning and welcome to the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. My name is Nyamgul Agaji. On the program this morning, we're going to be looking at two hot topics and, as usual, we'll bring you the top trending issues. Our first hot topic is that Nigeria ranks third highest in female genital mutilation. That is according to UNICEF. And also, we'll be talking about World Cancer Day and the ongoing battle. Uh, we also are going to be looking at uh, what we call of the press, where we look at the headlines from some of our national dailies. Once again, good morning and welcome to the program. We'll go right away to top trending issues, issues that caught our attention in the course of the last 24 hours. The building and construction industry may be witnessing one of its worst moments as exchange rate, building materials and labor prices have triggered in, an increase in construction cost by 200% in the last two years. Nigeria's inflation rate as of December 2023 climbed to 28.9% and the recent upsurge is primarily linked to the effects of petrol subsidy removal and the devaluation of the official exchange rate, both exerting substantial impacts on consumer prices. The direct effect of exchange rate is being felt more on imported materials like windows, doors, ceramics, tiles, plumbing appliances, and sanitary wares, which represent 23% of materials in the building market. Prices of essential building materials such as cement, blocks, doors, reinforcement rods, sand, timber, paints, roofing sheets, glass, and tiles have risen over uh, 75 percent in the last 12 months and this has become a source of concern to the built environment professionals because of the direct impact on supply affordability and accessibility to housing especially for low and middle income earners according to architects materials and labor prices have risen between 100 to 200 percent in the last two years for cement-based blocks, a 9-inch block previously sold at 450 naira is now 550 naira, while the 6-inch block is now 500 naira from 370. There has also been an increase in the price per ton of iron rods. The 8mm previously at 255,000 per ton is now 518,000. 10mm that used to cost 442,000 goes for 520,000 while 12 millimeter and 16 millimeter rods that sold for 446 naira is now 515,000 naira while 20 millimeters and 25 millimeters earlier sold for 442,000 naira now commands uh, 530,000 naira price depending on location now, accordingly, labor prices have gone up, with artisans that earlier charged between 3,000 to 4,000 naira per day last year, charging between 6,000 and 8,000 naira, depending on the location. Generally, prices of paint in 20-litre uh, containers also increased from 8,000 naira, with price hovering between 10,900 naira and 35,000 naira, depending on the brand, location, uh, while uh, retailers and distributors sell between 12,500 naira and 45,000 naira for the 20 liters. Price of sanitary fittings and other items have also hit the rooftop. Rental prices are also increasing in low-income settlements with a room self-contained of 150,000 naira being rated for 250,000 naira. A two-bedroom flat has increased from 400,000 naira to 600,000 naira while a three-bedroom apartment rose from 500,000 naira to 800,000 naira and could be higher depending on location. For the same type of units in highbrow areas, a two-bedroom is as high as 1.2 million naira, while a three-bedroom goes for um, 1.8 million naira and above. The President Commonwealth Association of Surveyors and Land Economy, uh, Mr. Shegun Ajan Lekoko, said without economic re-engineering, the cost of construction will continue to rise as the country is import dependent for major components of construction materials. 
While noting that infrastructure projects affected heavy engineering projects such as roads and bridges, he called for greater and effective cost management. According to him, the government must allow a special discretionary exchange rate for imported materials, grant tax relief for construction companies, and encourage use of local materials. And the president, uh, Kasley, further advocated establishment of a financial intermediation uh, that will reduce the overall cost expenditures and reduce interest to a single digit, as well as invigorate economic activities and help upscale gross, gross domestic product GDP growth and reduce unemployment. Now that is really disheartening. And the figures there are very mild and uh, moderate uh, because a room self-contained is no longer uh, just 250 or so. In some places I know uh, that are supposed to be low uh, housing or low places that shouldn't charge that much. I, I, I know that they go for 350, uh, some 400,000 Naira. And the highbrow areas, uh, some of them go for as, more, as, as much as a, a million and a million plus for just a self-corn. Uh, I've known that for some time now. So it's, it's really it's happening. A lot of people will now resort to sleeping under the bridge uh, when we should be getting houses that we will at least uh, have a roof over our heads. Now the second um, top trending issue is that the court has struck out the 22.8 billion naira fraud charge against X chief of air staff that was done on tuesday uh, the charge against former chief of air staff air marshal adeshola mosu and two other air force chiefs justice chukwe juku and neke set the military officers free while delivering rulings on their separate preliminary objections challenging the court's jurisdiction to try them for the alleged crime the court held that Amosu and his co-defendants, Air Vice Marshal Jacob Bola Adigun and Air Commodore Badebo Owoduni Olubenga could not be tried by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, because they were serving military officers at the time the alleged crime was committed. Air Marshal Amosu was appointed Chief of Air Staff on January 16, 2014, and he was removed from the post on July 13, 2015, 12 months before his arraignment in court. The defendants were first arraigned before Justice Mohamed Idris on June 29, 2016, by the EFCC and seven companies. The companies named in the charge are Delfina Oil and Gas Limited, McCollum Oil and Gas Limited, Hebron Housing and Properties Company Limited, Trapezites, BDC, Funds and Pricey Limited, Degui Oil and Gas Limited, Tim Seg Investment Limited, and Solomon Healthcare Limited. The EFCC accused them of conspiracy, stealing, money laundering, concealing of crime proceeds, and converting funds belonging to the Nigerian Air Force to their personal use around March 5, 2014, in Lagos. They were also accused of concealing proceeds of crime and thereby committed an offence contrary to Section 18A of the Money Laundering Prohibition Amendment Act 2012 and punishable under Section 17A. They, however, had pleaded not guilty to the charge. The case was later transferred to Justice Aneke after Justice Idris, now a Justice of the Supreme Court, was elevated to the Court of Appeal in 2019. EFCC had on January 16, 2019, obtained a court order for fitting 2.2 billion allegedly recovered from Amosu to the federal government. Also for fitted was 101 million recovered from Solomon Enterprises, a company linked to him. After the forfeiture proceedings were concluded, the EFCC amended the charge, reducing the number of defendants from 11 to 3, removing the eight companies previously named in it. Also, attempts made by the defendants to hold a plea bargain talks with the EFCC on two occasions failed due to the insistence of the anti graft agency that the agreement must include a custodial sentence and other stringent terms. The defense counsel, Bolaji Ayorinde, uh, while moving the application, had argued that the defendants were serving military officers at the time when the EFCC investigated them. Therefore, they are only subject to trial by a court martial. Ayorinde had also concluded contended that Section 16 and 18A of the Money Laundering Act 2011, as amended, did not create the offense of criminal breach of trust.
for which the defendants were charged. Delivering his ruling on Tuesday, Justice Aneke held that the prosecution neither committed nor denied the disposition of the defendants. The court held that as June 23, 2016, when the original charge was filed, one was not sure whether the first defendant was still a serving officer of the armed forces, since his exact date of retirement was not stated. The court also reached a similar decision for the second and third defendant and accordingly quashed the charges. Now we'll move on to the third one. Um, the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, the EFCC, has uh, uh, frozen an account belonging to Abubakar Ahmed Sirika, brother of immediate past Minister Hadi Sirika, over an alleged 8.06 billion Naira contract fraud in the Federal Minister of Aviation. According to a report in The Nation, the anti-graft agency made this known after the arrest of Abubakar Sirika over contract fraud worth about 3.2 billion naira that was traced to his private company, Angirios Nigeria Limited. Abubakar Sirika, also a level 16 officer and a deputy director in the Federal Minister of Water Resources, it was, it was guided that four big contracts were awarded to Abubakar's Angirios Nigeria Limited when his brother was in charge of the ministry. According to the EFCC investigators, Abubakar Ahmed Sirika is listed as the company's MD CEO and the sole signatory to the two accounts linked to the firm with two banks. The four contracts the ex-minister awarded to his brother, which were not executed, are construction of the terminal building in Katsina Airport that gulp 1.3 billion naira fire truck maintenance and refurbishment center in katsina airport 3.8 billion naira procurement and installation of elevators air conditioners and power generator house in aviation house abuja 615 million naira procurement of magnus aircraft and simulator for nigerian college of aviation technology zaria 2.3 billion naira the investigators revealed a payment of 3.2 billion out of the total contract sum of Angirius Nigeria Limited, and upon receipt of the payment, he allegedly transferred it to different companies and individuals. The investigators also alleged that no trace of work had been done on any of the contract items to date. Hadi Sirika was the substantive Minister of Aviation for Nigeria after former President Muhammad Buhari was re-elected in 2019 but was minister of state in 2015. Sirika was also associated with the now infamous Nigeria Air scandal. Okay, that was so, so much, you know. So uh, we're expecting to see that the EFCC or the courts or any um, body that is supposed to handle all these issues will do a very good job and we will see that the job is being done. Let's hope that Nigeria is going to get better because of all this and the people who are uh, even thinking about committing crimes such as this uh, will be thinking twice right now. We'll take a short break now. When we return, we'll be looking at the papers. Stay with us. <laughs>